Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Penelope po Penelope Possum channel with your host, me, Penelope the Possum. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just go with that one. This is Spooky Scary Saturday number ten. Hello. Yep. Ohio oh, Retro, you're officially in the anniversary episode of uh, Sp Spooky Scary. Of course, as I promised earlier, we're playing some uh, Darkwood. Been a long time since we played this, I think. Not really long, but kind of a long time. Okay, I'm gonna have to relearn how to do everything because I do not remember anything. Norning, sporting, speeding through the arbor. Bro, what? Okay, I think the main mission we're on is to is to destroy the dogs. I think he, I think he's singing a she sea shanty is what's up because explodo is explodo is explodo. Okay, Explodo Jones, stop. Just stop. Stop. Yeah, I can throw the meat to them. Uh, what kind of boba options do you have? Milk tea and strawberry. Uh, sh and I lost the meat.
My microphone just got unplugged. I'm so sorry. I didn't notice. I said uh, happy anniversary to the spooky scary Saturday as well. Retro. I'm so sorry. I didn't notice. I think Retro said they're from Latvia? No. Absolutely not. No. Go away. That was the other subscriber. My bad. <laughs> oh God, what? What the f No, seriously, what the hell was that? Did I just get attacked by a caveman? You. What say you? That was awful. How did that freak get in? More importantly, why? For what purpose? I don't have much, man. But I had a trap! I know! I know how I got in now. I know exactly how I got in, I bet. Here. This! This wall! Or, you're right, and somehow he got past the trap. I left here. I need more boards. So, can someone explain to me, like, why that just happened? I did not find wood at the campsite. Found fuck all at the campsite. There was nothing there. Get 
Get over here, you freak. You think if I stand in the circle long enough, some weird shit's gonna happen? It is creepy there. A river! Creepy everywhere here, man. Whole place is creepy. I don't think this place even really exists. It's like a Minecraft world, like skew. That's right, run away. That was completely not useful. Yeah, it does seem about like that, doesn't it? The traitor's gone. Maybe there's something useful out here where all these poisonous mushrooms are. Oh shoot, yeah, I could probably do that, couldn't I? Hold on, we're looking up a strat guide. So, how's everybody's day been going? He 
you screwed up dinner. What happened? Didn't cook the potatoes all the way. Aw. Well, at least pot potatoes are fine. Usually. Okay. Okay, so I do need the watch. Yeah, no, no one's gonna talk about the music. Also, good job, Retro Caramel. You got boba today. I wish I had boba. Don't do that. Going broke is a bad idea. it was worth it. Oh my gosh, there's so much about this game. Burned house might have some loot in it. What, what the fuck? Maybe it wasn't worth it to come here. Boba is pricey, but it is very tasty. It's good for an occasional treat. And I do mean very occasional. Dang it. The question is, should you waste your money on fancy clothes? Uh. Could you find clothes that are less pricey? That are of a similar way? Or do you need those specific clothes? Oh wait, you don't really need them? I would say hold off.
but like you already splurged big time and got yourself the uh boba you might want to wait a little while same here Most, if not all, of my clothes were bought second hand. So, so, four tips and tricks on the game. I have only found, uh, like, There's a cat outside my door! The cat has opened my door! Guys, help, it's learning. I mean, at least he just runs away instead of runs at me. You fucking... Cat Rodro! You... Boy, if you don't... You, you dummy. Cheem. How are you such a dummy boy? You close the door on yourself, doofies. Goofus. Little gooferino. My cat's a genius and got himself trapped in my room. Dum dum. You go to the mall for your clothes? Bougie. I go to uh, secondhand shops for most of my clothes. Can I sleep? Sleep would be cool.
Well, I guess I'm just gonna hang out in my house. Potatoes! Ah! Uh -huh. Hello! Sorry bud, I need to book. There's a cat in here. There's a cat in my room. Most people like cats in some respect, I think. Need a little bit more. Why does Retro Caramel have like the craziest stuff? I think I can afford to use my gasoline as a barter chip. Yep. You have too much time on your hands. <laughs> Not a bad problem to have, I'll be completely honest. I do need one of those. I need the watch. I need the watch. It seems, it seems like every night I make it through without dying, I gain... Yes. Holy cow! Guys! Look at all this stuff! Look, look at all this stuff! Oh my gosh! Guys! 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 This! This! Is a game changer! I didn't cheat. I looked up a something that had nothing to do with that. Okay, we'll put these full containers in here. Buddy, I have more stuff. Okay, I think I want to trade the single top shot pistol. And more of the rope. Perfect. Now I can get the watch. Oh, I can also get rid of the knife, I think. Uh, you know what? No, I'll keep the knife for now. 
Why are you at Chick-fil-A retro? Let's put that in there. This in here and this and those. I mean, yeah, Trick Filet is pretty good, but that doesn't like elaborate anything. Okay, cool. Good, 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 good. See that time up in the top there? Now, now, now. Now I can always know what time it is. Oh yeah. Right. They're not smiling. What? Oh. Oh no. Gonna barricade this window as well since I got a few more boards. And uh yeah, they look sad. It I mean I hate to break it to you, Retro, but most people who work jobs like that are kind of like sad. Like, working in food service and customer service isn't exactly fun. You'll give them a raise? What, are you their boss? Yeah, tip. That's usually what people call that. Thunder? So now I have basically a semi-infinite healing source. Well, what? Putting plenty of traps to make sure no bugaboos get into my house. So I got a new weapon. You want? Know so far, this has been exceptionally productive. I think this has been the most productive game of Darkwood I've had in a very long time. Like, I got stuff done. Guys. Yeah, yeah, that box was full of goodies and I really, really should have, like, gotten into it sooner. Isn't there a bear trap somewhere around here? Aha. Uh -huh. I killed the camp dogs. I have so many fortifications on my house. You'd have to be a complete fucking moron to try to get into it. Kids started crying. What is happening? What kids? 
Dang. Well. Ah. Uh. There are usually children crying at the mall. Yeah, it is a back rooms level. Traitor, you're in charge. Imagine a kid got stuck in the back rooms. If they were young enough, they could completely, like, just assume that was normal. And that's what I think is amazing about children. Is that, like, when they are young, you can put them into just about any situation. And if they're in that situation for long enough, they'll just think it's normal. Holy cow, I am finding all of the stuff. The guy in your closet. Retro, do you need, do you need help, buddy? Like, do you need psychological help? Yeah. Retro, seek mental help, please. Dang. Well, looks like I'm gonna need that shovel later. God, it's spooky down here. I'll keep you company. I'm not here all the time, but you know. <laughs> oh, this is a bad idea. I have made. Nope, 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 nope. I don't want to know. We're going home. We're going home, we're going home, we're going home, we're going home, we're going home! Fuck that shit! I need a gun, a big gun, a bigger gun, and a flamethrower. And a shovel. We're going home. That That's enough of that. But, for real, Retro. Oh, 
Oh, it's raining. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I also do a little musical number when I almost die. It's fucking raining, man. This is bullshit. Oh, hell no! It's thundering and raining in the game. Why? 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 Why is it? Why? 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 Home. What? Absolutely. Freaking lootly not. Eagle eye, see further. Heal. I think this. Your power went off. That's not a fun fact. I think that's just a fact. I think to be a fun fact, it has to be fun. I wonder if this rain will make the mushrooms grow back. That'd be cool. Do you have any knowledge on why your power may have gone out retro? Turn on the generator. Meow. 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 Oh, it must be out of power. I gotta put some juice in it. Your great grandma just won the lottery? Well, good on you, bro. Or good on her, I suppose. Now is the time to be extra nice to your great grandma. That's what I just said. Forgot the generator needs juice. Oh, hey, it's not raining anymore. That's nice. Yeah, make her some cookies or something. Or whatever your great-grandma likes. Yeah, don't suck up too much. Just enough. Yeah, or prunes or whatever. Like a little treat. What I just said. Bring her prunes or whatever she likes. Like a small thing she likes. Look, I have bullet. I have pills. I have scrap metal. I have so much gasoline, batteries, bread. I am doing good. Y'all, I am doing amazing. Well, uh... Tell your great-grandma that the streamer you like watching says hi.
oh, this is like one of those crazy situations you don't expect to happen on a stream. It really is, because like, that came out of nowhere, yeah? Also, there's just a part of my body on the floor now, so like, am I good? Am I gonna die? What do y'all think? I wonder if there'd be a door here, but I don't know how to do that. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice thing to bring her. I think she'll like that. Ugh, freaking ears. But yeah, maybe spend a bit more time with your great grandma doing Sudoku's or whatever great grandma's like these days. I don't know. I don't know, man. Now we just sit in our room and wait. Uh, sure. I'm just, you know, currently not trying to pee my pants. Guys, I think there's a ghost in my house. That door just opened on its own. You saw. You guys saw. The door opened on its own. Shit's haunted, man. My house is haunted. There's monsters outside. I'm ready for you. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, we're just enjoying the creepy noises now. It's dogs. The noises are dogs. Don't know. I survived, bitches. Who are you? Okay, buddy. Bye. Hi, trader. Mm -mm. Anything I need, anything I need. Uh, lots of things I need, nothing I can afford. Your phone's about to die. Oh no! But yeah, your uncle got a bunch of fine china. Ow. Yeah, just uh, just, a, just another day, another dollar. What the f- WHERE DID HE GO?! Y'all, I swear, I'm not tripping. He was just there, right? He was, yeah, he was literally just sitting on my bed. I would have seen him if he left the house. Right? Right? Ugh. 
Like, he would have had to pass me. I... Would have found it by now, right? Like, there's no way I wouldn't have found a secret basement in my own house at this point, right? Alright, uh, I think that's enough of that for now. Um, that was absolutely terrifying in a way I cannot even begin to describe. So, like, me and Explodo Jones, my husband, were out today, alright? And we were driving down one of the streets. Oop. Incorrect. Uh, I think it was a highway, specifically. And... Well, the thing is, that, um, there was this lady behind him, driving. He's the one who drives. I don't drive. I'm too scared to drive. But, uh... It, uh, she was so mad. Like, she was literally so angry about the fact that he wasn't going as fast as she wanted him to go. And she couldn't get around him. Like, we could see her screaming in her car. And, <laughs> uh, she... She, uh, it was sad, but the funny bit is, first off, the, the music that was playing completely clashed with what was happening. Like, we were listening to some goofy-ass song. He didn't, he kept his, you know, normal speed. But, uh, we ended up at a stoplight with her behind us. Yeah? And... She got even more mad, and he turned back to look behind him and smiled at him, at the lady. And it was so funny. She was so mad. She was molding. She was coping and seething so bad. It was so bad. And, um... Yeah. But the funniest part to me is that she was just trying to get to some shops nearby. Anyways, so, uh, I've played enough of that for now, and we'll watch these videos, one by Alter, Dr. Bob, Grumbled Entertainment, Markiplier, Vintage 8, Vintage 8, and Vintage 8. We got pretty far, uh, in Darkwood, I think, and they learned some stuff, but for right this second, I'm going to pause, 
and I have to do something real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, bye, Retro. See you in the next video, buddy. Uh, catch the stream some other time then, maybe. Hope your great-grandma enjoys the, pos the uh, awesome picture you give her. And, uh, yeah. You can catch up on whatever you miss later. Hi, buddy. Hi, Cheeto. Meow. So we're going to try to watch as many of the videos I put on this playlist as possible. Uh, this one's by Alter. The next one's by Dr. Bob. The next one will be by Grumbled Entertainment. And the next three... Will be by. Oh, hold on. Here you go. Then we have Markiplier, and the last three are Vintage 8. You may notice I've already watched this video. I have watched these two. I haven't watched this, 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 or that. Ooh. you're not gonna murder me or anything <laughs> right yes or i mean no i uh, i definitely haven't killed anyone and if i had oh. it was an accident <laughs> you've got a dangerous sense of humor <laughs> this is a cute first day <laughs> cool. okay hold on please don't tell me there's a kissing scene first thing in this Can I take a look? Um. Hmm. All I see are two pretty eyes and one beautiful soul. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry. Uh, let me just check this in my ear. Mirror in my mirror. <laughs> just hold that thought. Hi. Hi, Valazy. Uh. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening yet. Can everybody hear it now? <gasps> oh, great job. Good. Ew. Uh, oh, what the? Uh, oh god. Uh, not this again. Okay. It's a fly. Not this again. This has happened before. Don't. <clears throat> Jerk. Oh. Hey, uh, everything's fine. <clears throat> Just grabbing some tape. I'll only be a minute. Uh, do you need any help? <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> uh, just tape 
put. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's full of bugs. Like Oogie Boogie from Nightmare Before Christmas. Is she a zombie? She's got like super strength. lose you. I'm so sorry about tonight. But you know, it's all taken care of. And now we can be together. Just you and me. Every day. <laughs> Forever, baby! Oh my god! Where were we? What the app? Uh, well, uh, then, that was, I don't, why is her face full of bugs? Boom. This so, like, why was her face full of bugs? Why did any of that happen? Is her face full of bugs because she's a murderer? There's so many questions and no answers. I kind of love it, but I like like one answer about one thing. So, I mm, questions, no answers, none of them. Hive of activity, with crew and cast members rushing from one place to the next. Stars leaving hair and makeup to await their calls. Cameramen dashing to their posts, while stunt coordinators make their vital checks with the pyrotechnics team, ensuring everything is ready to go and safe too. Everything has to go well. There are so many variables to consider, but they're all working for perfect. Oh yeah, there was there was wiggle rice in the eyes, and there were flies in her eyes, like fully grown flies. What was she? Was she human? Was she even a she? She punched a hole through her wall. She decapitated that guy and all those other guys. Yeah, she might have been Oogie Boogie also, but just full of flies. 
I think it had something to do with all the decapitated, rotting heads in her little safe. Perfectionist. So the entire crew is working to make sure they get things right. A sudden, awestruck silence falls over ah. the hustling and bustling. Oh no. Now there's something in my eye. Oh. Ah. Oh, this is awful. Uh, hold on. I gotta make sure it's not like a bug or something. I'm freaking out. No, it's not wiggle rice, thank god. Uh, I think I just got an eyelash in my eye. Oh, that was horrible timing. That was really, really bad timing for that to happen to me. Oh, that gave me a heart attack. Oh. As everyone turns their heads to see one man exiting his trailer and walking out towards his chair. He moves with the undeniable swagger of a man who only makes the most egregiously over-the-top action blockbusters. His golden mullet sweeps out behind him. Is this Michael Bay? Is this supposed to be Michael Bay? A leather bomber jacket over his shoulders that looks like it's been hand polished and that it cost an entire month's pay for one crew member. A pair of aviator sunglasses hang loosely from the collar of his t shirt, which is emblazoned with the stars and stripes. Everyone watching can practically hear an electric guitar cover of the Star Spangled Banner playing in the background, complete with the screeching calls of bald eagles flying overhead. He's the director, and he came here to make a movie that'll net millions, if not billions, of dollars at the global box office. His each and every step brims practically overflows with bravado because he's the man who gives the people what they want. All the stunts, high-speed car chases, gigantic alien robots that punch each other repeatedly, macho military action heroes, and high-octane thrills that an audience secretly craves. The director knows that all the people who criticize his movies for things like poor writing and lazy plots are just nerds who wish they could do what he does. And there's one thing this director knows how to do better than anyone else in Hollywood. He knows how to film explosions. The yeah, it has to be a goof of Michael Bay, right? Oh, my shoulders are sore. Leading man, the actor in the starring role of this movie, quickly appears and comes up to talk to the director. He's just sat down in his chair and yelled through a megaphone, telling everyone to stop standing around and get back to work. As for the actor, he's pretty famous but also the kind to accept any paycheck, regardless of how good the movie winds up being. The exact thing that landed in here. He's a name for hire, with a filmography that's filled with just as many meteoric lows as outstanding highs. He talks to the director about the upcoming scene that they're moments away from shooting. It's a simple shot, so straightforward, that even a talented filmmaker could pull it off. As they discuss it, the director lays out the plan. All the actor has to do is walk stoically towards the camera and keep looking directly forwards not into the lens though. Then just before they start rolling, the director passes something to the actor, only noticed by a few of them. It's like an unwritten rule of film for action movies that the hero can't look into the explosion no matter how cool it is. The more observant crew members his sunglasses. The actor puts on the aviators and gets to his mark. There's a moment of stillness before lights, camera, action. Watching the feed from the cameraman through his monitors, the director can practically taste the award nominations that are surely about to come flooding in. The actor takes a step, then another, and this is gonna be awesome, but something's gonna go horribly wrong because it has to. Once the shot has been slowed down in post-production, it'll look even better. Then comes the pièce de résistance. Boom! An enormous explosion erupts from behind the actor. 
yet he keeps his head facing forwards. Still walking, more and more things start to spontaneously detonate. Fire and sparks shoot into the air. Debris is sent raining down around the set, miraculously missing the actor. The director clearly thought ahead and sits under an umbrella that deflects the few scraps of shrapnel that come in. Wow. That's a cool kind of umbrella. For people living in places with high chances of hail, that'd be a good thing to have. His way. The rest of the crew aren't so lucky, seeking cover while trying to stay quiet for the cameras. The most confused out of everyone is the stunt team. Nobody triggered any pyrotechnics for the shot, yet a huge series of explosions is still somehow occurring before their very bewildered eyes. Satisfied with the explosive shot, the director calls cut. However, having suffered severe tinnitus from the series of detonations behind him, the actor doesn't hear him and keeps walking. More and more explosions keep arriving. And this is why tinnitus sucks. All that guy's hearing is ee. Not cut or anything. It has to suck. directly behind him, following him as he gets closer to the director, still unable to hear his instruction to cut. And of course, what happens next is boom. Time passes. Most forget about the in memoriam at the Razzies and move on with their lives. But some aren't so lucky because they wind up dead. But in this beachfront town, that's just part of the nine to five. At least it is for those working at the local police department. It's never a good day when another body turns up, and before long, the precinct's crime scene experts are on the case. They waste no time examining the area, searching for clues as to how the city's latest victim met their untimely demise. With gloves on, they scour the scene. At first, it looks to be another tragic case of death by gunshot wound, but with no murder weapon at the scene, or even so much as a single clue that might point to who the killer even was. Suddenly, the team examining the crime scene all turn, alerted by the sound of a car pulling up and someone stepping out. It's the detective, and he's just been assigned to this case. Now, there are a few important things of note about this detective. The first is that he's a maverick. He's a man who doesn't play by the... Oh boy, this sounds like another bad movie plot, doesn't it? ...rules. The only reason the commissioner of police hasn't kicked him from the force yet is because he produces results. Although his methods are at times unorthodox and at times downright dangerous, the detective always gets his man. So the commissioner lets it slide, but warns him to watch himself every time. This detective also recently made a particularly strange purchase. Being a fan of the movies of a certain director, he's been lucky enough to stumble across a pair of aviator sunglasses on eBay that were owned by the filmmaker before his tragic death by catastrophic explosion. Now the detective is rarely seen without his new shades. They're his pride and joy, and he takes every opportunity to tell the officers working at desks in the precinct to whom the glasses used to belong. And not content with just <laughs> letting the aviators sit on display in his apartment, the detective is also known to wear them from time to time. Oh boy. Yep, I can smell where this one's going. However, he'll only do so after giving a one-liner in honor of his favorite fallen director. The thing is, he needs a little bit of practice. Approaching the crime scene, the detective asks the experts what they found. They hurriedly rush through the details, hoping they can convey all the key information before the detective starts talking about his sunglasses again. They tell him what they found, the victim's key physical attributes, his apparent death by gunshot, and the lack of any traces of the killer present at the scene. The detective takes a long pause and scans the area. He pulls his aviators out of his pocket and turns to the nearest examiner. So you're telling me that this man he unfolds his arms and slips the shades on. Is dead? Bang! Directly behind him, the detective's car erupts into flames, exploding with such force it flips over, landing in a smoldering wreck. The force of the blast disrupting the whole crime scene. We're sure that, in his head, a song by The Who probably started playing. Shortly after the detective's inevitable dismissal for causing several hundred thousand dollars worth of property damage, he finds himself forced to sell most of his possessions Wow. To get by, including, of course, the prized aviator sunglasses. Luckily, they fetched a decent price online, bought by someone who had never even heard of the director who'd previously owned them. What appealed to the glasses' new owner more was the hefty price tag. Them being more expensive was the perfect status symbol. 
When he wasn't trying to scam his social media followers into paying for an online course that had no useful information in it, this influencer was attending parties with fellow internet superstars. But for him, events like these weren't an opportunity to socialize or even enjoy some downtime with friends. After all, if he couldn't turn an interaction into content that he could monetize, then how could it even be worth having? And on this night in particular, a party that would surpass all parties is in full effect. Despite the action offering so I think these glasses cause explosions somehow. No value other than boosting his own ego. The influencer wastes no time flexing on everyone else at the party. It's his second most important reason for going to a party, not to meet new people or celebrate, but to remind everyone there that he's rich, albeit maybe only slightly more so than some of the others in attendance. The night is mostly spent with a phone or camera in hand, filming people pretending to dance and wordlessly singing along to music as they record themselves to update their followers. He needs to up his game, the influencer thinks to himself. He can't bear the thought of leaving the party having posted less than anyone else. Then, suddenly, he spots a familiar face and his blood begins to boil. It's the streamer, one who had interviewed the influencer most Oh boy. Earlier. With the stream going out live, and because the influencer was notoriously not all that bright, he had been caught giving some answers that didn't exactly paint him in the best light. While the streamer had been polite and respectful throughout, the influencer still blames him for the whole incident, claiming an Of course, because it can never be his fault. Eh, I hate people like this. There's too many people online like that. In a post to his followers that the guy was just an obsessed stalker and that he manipulated the whole interview. Standard boilerplate non-apology stuff, sans the ukulele, but see- <laughs> Let's not mention the ukulele incident, please. Seeing him at the party, the influencer wanted revenge. However, he couldn't risk boxing his most vocal critics with everyone around filming on their phones, but he could embarrass the streamer instead. He noticed he had his expensive aviators in hand, and it gave him an idea. The influencer angrily approached the streamer, phone in hand, starting up a live video on his social media page. He challenged the streamer to put on the sunglasses, and then his followers watching live would vote on which of them looked cooler. The streamer politely declines and assures the influencer that there are no hard feelings about the interview, and that he's just come out tonight to have a good time. The influencer doesn't want to give up though, and eventually the streamer has no choice but to agree. Poor guy. First, the influencer wears the glasses himself. Likes flood the phone screen, votes piling on from his biased fan base. But apart from that, nothing happens. Then he begrudgingly passes the shades. So it only works with certain kinds of people, it seems. To the streamer, who's finishing up his drink from a red solo cup. The influencer warns his mortal rival how much he paid for them. Calmly, not once retaliating to the angered, antagonistic social media star. The streamer slides on the shades and tosses his empty cup over his shoulder. This triggers an explosion that engulfs the influencer in a ball of flame and brings an abrupt halt to the party. The votes declare the streamer the winner of who looks cooler. The sunglasses change hands a number of times shortly after. Yep. Uh, so somehow, someway, those sunglasses cause explosions to happen eventually landing in the possession of yet another new owner the billionaire an owner of several prominent companies and a highly controversial reputation across the globe due to his often faulty products and frequent social media gaffes but a <laughs> oh that's great that's a great <laughs> that's a great picture a certain pair of cool new shades might be exactly what he needs to turn this deal around you see, the billionaire decides to buy the sunglasses not just because he's fond of them, not only because of their price tag, and not even motivated by the various former famous owners of the aviators. He's noticed what they can do, and he thinks that owning them for himself would be the perfect way to look as cool as he thinks he is. And having bought an entire social media website, he has the perfect platform to debut his cool new shades. The post goes up a day in advance, announcing a live stream starting tomorrow. Even though his site has notoriously bad video sharing functionality, the billionaire is certain that it'll definitely work this time. The day arrives, and he's right, for the first time ever. All his fans, even those who are starting to realize the cracks in his facade, all tune in to see the big reveal. 
Oh boy. The billionaire greets everyone in an awkward mumble, a far cry from the bombastic announcement that he had promised. Still, the live stream chat sends their praise in the forms of gifts of Shiba Inus and emojis of the moon. Although he fumbled the opening of this stream, the billionaire's confidence starts to build. This'll prove to everyone just how cool and smart he is, and all his most vocal critics will be forced to admit it too. He reaches for the sunglasses and slips them on. There's a long, awkward pause. The comments from the stream's chat start to flood in, most wondering what's going on, if something was supposed to happen or if the stream is cut out. The billionaire becomes frantic. Trying again, he takes off the shades and puts them back on. Still nothing. Where was the explosion? Uh, Why wasn't what? anything happening? So, it seems to pick and choose whom... It, it looks like they actually have to be somewhat interesting people to get the explosion. He tries a third time, a fourth, a fifth, each attempt becoming more and more frantic. Something was wrong, and his crippling insecurity only mounts as he glances towards the comments. The live stream viewing numbers are dropping rapidly, with several comments mocking him relentlessly. Many fans even declare their intention to stop supporting the billionaire, immediately growing embarrassed to have ever vocally backed him. Out of overwhelming embarrassment, he closes down the stream and releases a post immediately after, stating it was all a technical issue, and he'll personally see to it that any re-uploads of the footage are wiped from the internet. But it's womp, already womp. too late. Sorry, Elon. Are sharing clips around all over the place. It's everywhere. The whole world can see how stupid he looks. While his attempt at wearing the glasses hadn't been as explosive as he'd hoped, it was certainly incendiary for the stock prices of all the billionaires failing businesses. They <laughs> bombed, not in the way he'd been expecting, and before long, he was reduced to a laughing stock the world over. But what exactly are these glasses? There's an old cliched adage that has existed on the internet since time immemorial. The legend that cool guys don't look at explosions. The SEC yeah. Foundation isn't sure if the phrase and phenomenon of cool guys looking in the opposite direction of large detonations came first, or if it was a direct result of SCP-1143. It's something of a chicken or the egg conundrum. Yeah. The thing is, there's actually been studies about the what came first, the chicken or the egg thing. And I believe studies showed it was probably the egg that came first. But for a pair of explosion-causing anomalous aviators. Kept stored in a secure fitted carry case within a standard containment locker is SCP-1143. At first glance, before that is on, a that terrifying is, chicken. these just appear to be an unremarkable pair of sunglasses. SCP-1143 lacks any details that denote branding making it hard to distinguish exactly where the glasses actually came from, whether they were manufactured or are an anomalous pair of an existing brand. But that isn't the most unusual aspect of this highly dangerous headgear. Whenever a person wears SCP-1143, they are not only given the designation of SCP-1143-1, but this action will also result in the spontaneous detonation of inanimate objects in their direct vicinity. Although in keeping with the mantra of cool guys not looking at explosions, this means that only objects situated behind the wearer of SCP-1143 will be affected and subject to exploding. The probability of a successful SCP-1143 explosion, as well as the size and damage of the blast, is dependent on a number of factors. For one, the physical build of the person wearing SCP-1143. Physiology has a direct link to the explosive effect, meaning that the more physically fit an SCP-1143-1 wearer Oh my god, so because the guy was kind of chubby, did he maybe make the world's teeniest, tiniest explosion? Like a little... ...is, the more explosive force is generated by the anomalous aviators. This also applies to the subject's intelligence too, as those with above average intelligence will also increase the scale of the Meow. destructive detonation. Meow. Well, we guess both those factors explain why it didn't work for the billionaire. <laughs> oh, ow! Oh, oh, you didn't have to murder him. He was already dead. Stop, stop, he's already dead. Oh my god. Oh, man. Sometimes the whole group 
comes up to just roast one person. Attitude is also a key factor in determining the effectiveness of SCP-1143's explosive capabilities, specifically altering the magnitude, spread, and duration of the explosions. While the exact conditions that SCP-1143 employs to determine a person's attitude seem to vary between subjects, anyone who is outwardly and earnestly confident, calm, and even maintains a degree of genuine self-pride is more likely to generate a successful and powerful detonation. Okay. Surprisingly, clothing is also an important attribute. When wearing anomalous, explosion-causing aviators, they can't clash with your outfit. An SCP-1143-1 wearing a suit or other formal wear will generate explosions that affect nearby buildings and other large-scale architecture. Anyone pairing SCP-1143 with more casual attire will find themselves walking away from exploding cars, houses, and other smaller-scale commonplace objects. And those that wear pajamas will severely limit the explosive capacity of the shades. <laughs> okay, but those were some pretty epic pajamas. Okay, kitty cat pajamas. That's awesome. Meaning only household appliances like TVs and toasters are likely to go boom. Of course, no cool guy not looking at an explosion is just idly standing around. As a result, the actions of the wearer will also affect the speed. Yeah, they were dope. Occurs. That would make an awesome the explosion. The aviators are more likely to occur when a subject is throwing an object over their shoulder, leaping over objects or out of buildings, or walking around a corner. Standing still has been known to reduce the likelihood of SCP-1143 activating, but only by a small percentage. Following on from this, speed also plays a crucial part in how- Guys. Guys, there's a cat. Yeah. Do you like the microphone chatter? There's a kitty cat on my lap. Oh, he's so sweet. There's a sweet little kitty on my lap. How ferocious an SCP-1143 explosion is. But while you might expect the faster someone moves to trigger a more violent detonation, in fact, the opposite is true. Moving at a decreased speed, far slower than average walking speed, as if to simulate moving in slow motion, will cause a 2,000% increase in the size, damage, and danger of an explosion. Faster is not necessarily worse, though, as traveling in a vehicle can also have the same increased explosive effect. And in these examples, the force of these detonations often causes large amounts of flaming debris to be violently launched in multiple directions. One more determining factor in how effective SCP-1143 is is the wearer's stamina and awareness of what is going on behind them. Subjects with higher stamina and who remain oblivious to the detonations can trigger spontaneous chain reactions of multiple explosions following the initial detonation. Shoot. Of course, these will subside the moment the SCP-1143-1 wearer either reacts to or directly witnesses the explosions. The moment they see the effect of the anomalous aviators, all explosions will immediately stop. However, any damage they have caused will remain. This mm. happens should the wearer notice reflections in the lenses of the sunglasses or if they turn around to face the fiery carnage. Luckily for them, though, SCP-1143 possesses its own mild, space-warping capabilities that protect the person wearing it. This additional anomalous property will cause any debris or shrapnel from the surrounding explosions <clears throat> to miss the wearer entirely, effectively creating a protective force field around them while they are wearing the sunglasses. That's kind of cool. This spatial warp can also temporarily deflect other oncoming projectiles, including bullets, keeping the user safe from all harm until they either remove the sunglasses or realize what is going on. So maybe take care the next time you decide to try a cool walk with your aviators on. You never know. There could be another pair of SCP-1143 out there. Okay, but logically thinking, logically thinking, y'all, these could not possibly be kept to just one entity. Like, the military would like a word. Welcome back, Retro! You've returned. Is your phone still going to die?
But, uh... Like, glasses like these would literally change combat. Oh good, you charged your phone. Uh, you didn't miss too much. We stopped playing Darkwood after getting a whole bunch of shit done. And, uh... We started watching videos, and now I have a cat in my lap. So yeah, there's a cat on me now. That's why we tend to prefer Oakley's because no one has ever looked cool. Okay, maybe not those specific li Oakley's, but there are pairs of Oakley's that don't look bad at least. In those, check out the Dr. Bob Patreon and become a junior researcher today. Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, like SCP 4258. <laughs> so this is implying that, like, Dr. Bob is the coolest guy. Nah. I've got time, and I decided I wanted to keep streaming. So, we still chillin'. We're gonna watch all these videos I have on my watch list here. And, uh... Freddy's Diner. You know. Oh my gosh, my also, my husband also has a kitty cat that's a rumbling. So this is called The Kid and the Camera, a short horror film by Grumble Entertainment. Once upon a star, there lived a boy named Caelan. He was a happy little tot of six years old, and on his birthday, he received a very special gift. His very own photo camera. He's six and he got a camera? It's an interesting gift for a six-year-old, I suppose. Caelan loved the so much that he took it out every oh, have you watched this one? I haven't actually watched this one. A picture here, a picture there. Until one day, a terrible accident happened. And the camera broke. Poor Caleb. didn't sleep a wink. Haunted by thoughts of his once perfect camera late into the night. That was when a sudden sound caught his attention. Yeah, I know a little bit about it, but I haven't actually watched it for myself. Oh my god, these headphones suck so much <sighs> the crackling in my headphones is really really loud no snuggling It's kind of hard to be scared when you have a super warm, rumbly cat in your lap. It really is. What the fuck is that? What is that? Looks like a dinosaur on drugs. 
What is this man? My man's really said face. A large winged creature. Ah! Close your mouth. Ah! Greeted the creature. I'm the Kipsney, your sleep fairy. Sleep fairy? That is correct, replied the Kipsney. My job ah, is sweet. Sure you get a good night's sleep, but it's come to my attention that you haven't been resting at all lately. I'd like to know the reason why. Your great grandma is awesome. Did she say hi back, by the way? Also, this creature is terrifying. Oh my god, I hate it. I hate it so much. It unnerves me so greatly. Especially right here. Look at that. That thing is not to be trusted. It looks like a pedophile. Kaylin had never heard of a sleep fairy. My parents told me not to talk to strangers. Strangers? I'm no stranger. I know all the <laughs> boys around. Ah, uh, that's a good I know point. Their, parents, their homes, their names. I even know your name, Kaylin. Now, would a stranger know your name? If they were stalking you, they would. Hold on it for a moment. No, I guess not. If you must know why I'm awake, it's my camera. It's broken. And just like that, tears welled up in Kaylin's eyes. Let me see. This thing is not to be trusted. Then the Kipsneed had an idea. Why don't I get this camera fixed for you? Perhaps that would help <laughs> you sleep easy. You could do that? Of course, and I know just the place. A factory in my home world. I'll lead you to the portal. Just follow my voice. Absolutely not. I've never watched this video, but I can already tell this is where it's going to go wrong. No. Kaylin. To any child who may be watching these videos, please, please, please do not follow anything or anyone. No matter what they say they are or who they say they are, if you don't know them. You will get hurt or kidnapped or worse. If you feel like someone's trying to take advantage of you or take you somewhere that you don't want to be, tell somebody like your parents or a police officer or someone else you might trust. And followed close behind the Kipsney. Snapping photos to mark the way in case of getting lost. I don't like the fact that there are like actual photos of things in this. At last, Kaylin reached a house. Seems quite abandoned, thought the boy. And dark, but there was the Kip's Needs voice again, beckoning. The portal to my home world inside, come along. I must have my camera fixed. So, in spite of his obvious fright, Kaylin marched into the home. Jeez. 
This could be like the actual story of what happened to a small child. And that's what's scaring me here. Like that some creep lured them into a house like this. With a puppet. It is terribly fucked up. I'm just so... Oh, there's gonna be a jump scare, isn't there? Uh... And there he is! The Kips need... Some weeks later, authorities discovered the basement. Where's the rest of them? The rest of the boy was never found. I... I don't even gotta say anything at this point, I think. That that just spoke for itself, really. And this is, you know what, I don't think it'd be a good idea to watch someone else play scary games and react to them playing scary games. I think that'd just be weird. You want to think happy thoughts now? Oh gosh. Oh no, my cat fell off my lap. Ugh. Oh, my ears. Okay, I got my headphones better now. I'm f I kind of... Let's, uh, let's keep going. For now. We've only got, uh, the ones by Re uh, Vintage A.
These are all analog horror. In March 1990, a sinkhole opened in the in Bio Mackinac. I think that's how you'd say it. 17 miles from Kate's Crossing, the residents of the area were immediately relocated in an effort to monitor the sinkhole. The Tangifolia. Tangifo. Tan, yes, government. Baby's ice cream commercial. Hold on. Uh, I'd have to find it. Hold on. Which one? This one or this one? The first one? Okay. There's good reason. Okay, so like, before we start this, this is a Japanese company that makes ice cream. All right. Reason for my glistening skin and how I shine and how my pores are so clean and clear. I eat little baby's ice cream. It keeps me young. It keeps me light on my feet. I spring from activity to activity. I love my job. I love my life. When you eat little baby's ice cream, you'll wink and nod and hug and high five each other with great enthusiasm. This is, this is a special time. Little baby's ice cream. Ice cream is a feeling. Ah! So, uh... I definitely just got the chills. Um, incredibly unnerving retro how dare you and I like cats
contracted the Dunnington Construction to build a makeshift facility near the evacuation site. Could go for some sweet tea or something. First question you asked me, like the very first or the first question today? Because if you're asking me if I remember the very first question you ever asked me, I have not. I have slept since then. And I am not very good at remembering things. After I've slept. But I think the first question you may have asked me ever was something along the lines of why my model was a possum? The very first. Yeah, I think it was something along the lines of a question about my model or something else. I'm sorry. You'll have to forgive me. I get so asked so many questions IRL in my job that I cannot remember. Oh, my opinion on cats. I remember now. Yeah, I remember. It was in the Minecraft video, right? Yeah, my opinion on cats is cats is good. Cats is always good. Big cat, small cat, medium cat, spicy cat, friendly cat. I like cats. I would pet a lion if someone let me. You might know. I would chase a line down to go pet it. Yeah. Lions, tigers, cougars, beware. I am out there. I will pet you so hard. You won't even know what hit you. Bears too. I'll pet a bear. Just watch me. I'm gonna pet a bear. And a red panda. I'm going to pet all the animals. Yeah, I think everybody in the chat likes cats. We love cats up in here. Okay, at its fastest, the sick and call grew 30 yards every day, consumed everything in its path, trees, homes, and wildlife. It was insatiable. Press nickname, the sinkhole Pac-Man. <laughs> Then, without much notice, the sinkhole stopped growing and then receded. However, not before the ma consuming the makeshift facilities. Yeah, dogs are alright. In my opinion, it's less fun to own a dog than it is to know someone who owns a dog. Because I own a dog. And I have to say, the... Upkeep and management of a dog is more work than it's really worth for the companionship. Like, if you want a creature that wants to be not near you, not next to you, inside of you all the time, then a dog would be fine. But if you're looking more for of a companion that can live five seconds without being in the space you have to breathe then a cat would be better 
And knowing someone who has a dog means you can go over and pet their dog whenever you feel like it without having to have that dog in your space 24-7, 365. And then there's the walking of the dog if you live in a place like an apartment. And then there's like picking up their poop. I mean, you have to scoop cat boxes, but at least it's in a sand and it's not too bad. You don't have to pick it up with like a thin plastic bags. Anyways, the uh, sinkhole consumed the makeshift facility researchers assigned to observe the sinkhole. Little is known about what occurred in the final days of this incident. Afterwards, things returned to normal. People returned to the, to Biomackinac. The area is routinely monitored and no signs of trouble have been reported in the last 20 years. However, recently, the hard drives from the research facility were recovered intact by a local fisherman. Following information is the digitized journals and research of material of Dr. Jeffrey Baker and Landon Fields. Nineteen ninety. We are approximately a mile from Pac-Man. Clever nickname. Regardless, I feel like we're too close. If this thing doesn't slow down, it'll gobble us up in less than a month. However, my associate, Dr. Jeffrey Baker, doesn't seem too concerned. He believes it'll slow down in the next few days, especially as it gets closer to the solid ground. I know he's an expert geologist and all, but I, the thought of getting gobbled up by a sinkhole in the middle of the night is an unnerving feeling, to say the least. That's uh, Landon's voice for now, by the way. And then there's the job. I understand getting measurements, doing graphs, radars, etc. But audio seems a little odd. According to Dunnington Construction, getting audio is the main reason I'm here.
Tomorrow we're dropping 1,000 feet of audio equipment into the sink. None of it will survive. I doubt we we'll hear anything but running water. I believe the creation of the Mackinac sinkhole was a natural occurrence. The nearest drilling site for oil or natural gas is well over 200 miles away. Whatever caused this sinkhole had to start under the earth. Escaped methane is most likely the culprit. More research needs to be done. Tomorrow, Landon and I will boat to the site. I'm eager to see how much this thing has grown. Last estimates were five yards a day. That's extraordinary. I believe we will find what it, that it has back slowed down, but we will see. I don't know what that accent was or why it kept changing, but we're going to roll with it. It's kind of neat. Lots of water noises. The sinkhole is growing much faster than anticipated. I estimate it's currently expanding at 10 yards a day. I am at a loss as to why. I'd like someone to con I'd like to consult with a colleague. I could not believe that even if I tried. But I'll believe you because I have no proof of otherwise. I'd like to consult with a colleague, possibly get someone on a federal level out here. But Dunnington Construction has forbidden that until the end of the assignment. It's weird. There's nothing around the site except squirrels. I wonder why they seem to be the only thing afraid of Pac-Man. Unafraid of Pac-Man. We dumped a thousand dollars worth of sound gears into a hundred thousand worth of sound gear into the water. I monitored as best as I could, but Pac-Man gobbled it up. I got about thirty minutes of worth of Sound recorded on several different platforms from sev a dozen different mics, all of which were in Pac Man's stomach or wherever everything goes. Asked if I could scrub the audio off site, but instead, the next day they set up. A quarter of a million dollar studio and essentially a well-built shack. They made it clear they don't want no one on the outside to hear their recording.
I listen to the audio. Nothing but running water. Imagine that. Dunningham Construction took the audio and has delivered more audio equipment. They ask that I now drop 3,000 feet of equipment into the sinkhole. Seems like cost is no issue here. What the hell do they expect to hear? March 11th, 1990. It's Minecraft mods. Eh, it's a little less high intensity, but it's still cool. You could do the same on Skyrim? Dude, what kind of laptop do you own? That's a beefy fucker. Is it a homebrew laptop? Like when you built? Or is it like... One you bought from somewhere. Another hundred thousand down the drain. Literally. Let's go listen to more running the water. Okay, there's something else mixed in with the running water. An acre laptop that your dad bought you. Hmm. That's interesting. You mean Acer or? <clears throat> Here you go. I cleaned it up and, well, I don't know what I'm hearing, Jeffrey. Seems just as perplexed. It sounds like the screams of the damned.
In all of my years, I've never heard anything like this coming from the earth. I've asked Landon to slow down, speed it up, alter it, whatever else immediately. I'd like to have a good guess as to what this is before rep from Dunnington Construction Tech's in. <laughs> it's okay. English is hard. All right, but that didn't do anything. Kinda sounds like frogs. Making everybody uncomfortable, man. This is scary. listen to the sound for hours. I can hear it in my damn sleep. My mind feels like it's a fog. A fog. I'm making too many simple mistakes. Maybe I'm coming down with something or perhaps I'm just tired. <sighs> I know I'm coming down with something. The sleepy. Oh, looks like it's gonna rain soon. Uh oh, great. Anyways, uh, that's it for this episode of Spooky Scary Saturday. It's been fun hanging out with everybody, but I gotta go play possum for a little while and maybe go get some sleep. Uh... I'll catch you all on the flip-flop. If you're watching this recording later on YouTube and you liked it, make sure to like it, uh, subscribe for more videos like this, make comments for other video ideas you have. 
games you want me to play, your favorite goldfish flavor, uh, your skincare routine. Your favorite Marvel movie. And whether or not creepers are valid. The creatures from Minecraft creepers. Uh... Share it with your friends, your grandma, your great-grandma, who doesn't even know what a streamer is. Uh, anybody who you think might like this sort of content. <clears throat> Come join me on Twitch for live streams every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. You'll get raw, unfiltered, unedited version of my videos with unseen content and things that you don't see in the videos on YouTube. Uh, tweet at me before Saturday on Twitter at Or on X now, excuse me. At Penelope Blossom. Tweet at me for video ideas for Yeah, uh, tweet at me whatever scary videos you might want me to watch. I'll give you a shout out in the video. I'll take screenshots and try to edit them into the video somehow. I'll figure all this out eventually somehow. I don't have any snacks at my desk usually, but I can offer whatever snacks I might have. You won't see them, but you'll hear them. Uh, and have a good rest of your night, day, afternoon, whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. Or the universe. And I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.